with any athletic activity that we're doing in a weight room, being in proper positioning is going to increase our odds of being efficient and making lifts, lifting heavier. So I'm joined today with uh, James Tatum, three-time national champion in Olympic weightlifting, and we're going to talk about positioning for the snatch, which as much as any exercise out there, being in proper position for the snatch is something that you have to do if you want to be performing optimally. So, Yeah, just like you said, I mean, consistency is huge in weightlifting. You know, that's how you can get better at snatches. If you can do more reps with less stress on the body and more reps over time, it's more technique work, more strength work, and then that uh, equates to more PRs. Yeah. So James is going to take us through what positioning should look like in the bottom of the snatch. So you naturally kind of go right to that good um, overhead position. You know, the, the grip width is usually when the bar is right at the crease of the hip or, you know, about six inches above the head. So this is good. Um, so let's go ahead and just do an overhead squat and then we'll see where you're at. Good. So now pause down there in the bottom. Another thing that I like to do is just to spend a lot of time in the bottom to reinforce these positions. So right now, what you want to see is that he's got a balanced foot. Weight's pretty balanced. Yes. Yeah. His hips are kind of in between his ankles and he's, uh, he's very vertically stacked. So if he... Let's say push your knees back a little bit and the hips go back. As you can see, I'm making them work hard right here, but uh, the shoulders kind of come forward. Okay, bring them back forward. So he allows the knees to come forward, the hips are in between the ankles and he's nice and stacked. So go ahead and come up and take a rest for a second. Uh, so the, uh, I mean, you can feel the biggest difference there. It's a lot harder to hold it right there. And it's a lot more stress in the anterior shoulder and we'll deal with a lot of shoulder pain in people that don't get into that position. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's one of the things that you look at is people that are overdeveloped in the front and they catch their snatches right here, you know, that and catching weight there, it's, it's painful. You know, you're gonna have a lot of pain in the anterior shoulder. So the trick is, uh, so we'll do that this time. We're gonna kind of exaggerate where the shoulders are. I mean, you know, we're making them work hard. We should have got the 20 kilo one. <laughs> So now all of that pressure is coming forward. Now get in that upright position. Good. And those shoulders rolled back. I'm going to sneak under. He's rolled back. His chest is up. It's kind of more of a bone on bone um, stacking of joints. Good. Go ahead and come up. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to just do an exaggeration drill to kind of force you into a position and stretch all of those muscles out at the same time. Um, so, I'm gonna go ahead. Uh, so this one I got from uh, Travis Cooper, who I got it from Chad Vaughn. Um, you know, there's not a lot of new things out there, but this is, uh, I think this is one of the newer ones. So it's kind of tough, but you get it behind the head, and also the, it kind of forces you to make sure you get that bar back. He's got a jerk grip, so that's really kind of stretching all out of here and here. Where do you feel it the most? Uh, posterior shoulder, teres, lats. Teres and lats, all right in here. So, you know, right there, his main things, those are his limiting factors. Somebody else might feel a little bit different, which is perfectly fine. That's the point of these exaggeration drills. They stretch where you're tight, no matter where they are. So, go ahead and do it an overhead squat. All right, so first, you notice how he comes forward like that. So, go ahead and stand up. Now, bring your toes off. What we got right here is a little ledge, and it makes his, uh, it raises his heel up. And so when he does this, he's going to be able to sit into a more balanced position. His center of gravity is, uh, is balanced over midfoot, and now he's just going to spend some time. And that's going to let him sink his hips in there, and it's going to allow him to open his shoulders up and kind of open all this up and the chest. Uh, good. Go ahead and come on up. Yeah, so now we're going to go into a few activation drills for the antagonist muscle for the lats and the uh, pec major. What this is doing is when you've got the bar overhead, there's not, there's not a lot of overload for the lower trap. But right here, by going in this position and he raises this up, he's going to be working all these scapular stabilizers and they're going to be overloaded just because you're in a horizontal position. So what he's doing there is just raising them up and it's, uh, I use it a lot to help you get the feel and to be able to activate the lower trap and some of these other scapular stabilizers. Uh, some of the things that he doesn't want to do is he doesn't want to roll his shoulders forward as he's doing this. Um, he wants to kind of 
contract right here and feel these lower traps doing a lot of that work. So this one is uh, it's kind of like a you know a progression past that one. Uh, a lot of times you know you'll activate some muscles and then you got to strengthen them up. You could go right into a row, which is good, but this is kind of like that in-between step. Uh, so it's the, the lower trap race, um, and it's really the same movement as that, except with the dumbbell. Uh, a lot of people um, will have a lot of trouble with this. So as you can see, as he goes up, you can see his ear clear underneath his arm. So he's got a full range of motion, and he's using his lower trap to do the work there. And as you can see, that's eight pounds, and that's quite challenging for him. Um, I, I mean, he's also been doing all these other drills, uh, but if that's a sign that he probably needs a lot more work in this exercise, you know, there's going to be a big learning curve for him there, but usually, um, I think, uh, like you can, you can use up to like 30 pounds for sets of eight. Like you can get that strong in this exercise. It's not one of those that you like always stay at five pounds. You can really get strong with this. Uh, and that's one point that, uh, you know, I think a lot of people miss is that you can get strong in these little unilateral strength exercises and they'll add a lot of stability to the snatch and the overhead position. So one other drill I like when we're, we've addressed kind of a lot of the upper body mechanics for a lot of athletes, they don't get their lower body into the right position. So they don't know how to actually drive their knees forward in the bottom of the snatch or overhead squat. So I'll take a heavy resistance band and have the athlete step into it. We'll get that band right around their hips and have them walk back. So now we're going to use the band to pull those hips forward as they squat down to help keep a more upright torso. And then with some light dumbbells in their hand, we'll press up while working on maintaining that position in the bottom of the squat with the knees driven forward, hips trying to sink in between the heels like James mentioned earlier. Yeah, I, I love that one, because I mean, again, it's kind of like forcing you into that position, getting those hips to sink under, and that'll make, a, that'll make a big difference. So if you're looking for some more drills like this to prepare yourself better as an Olympic weightlifter or a CrossFitter wanting to improve your Olympic weightlifting performance, you need to check out James's ebook for more drills like this and positions that'll help overall get you more physically prepared for the sport of Olympic weightlifting.